So, in conclusion, um, you need to make yourself some sort of sheet holding frame. So I've made mine out of some uh, 2x1 roofing lap timber, um, which doesn't seem to be burning on the inside at all. Seems to, I've, I've made probably about 30 products with this so far, and it's showing no signs of um, burning or discoloration or warping. It's just four pieces of timber screwed together in the corners um, with some of these clips that you find on cases and all sorts of things. I bought these off eBay. They were about oh, £3 for a bag of 10 of them. They were really cheap. Um, I've used this heating mechanism, uh, this infrared heater that I bought from, I think it was Wilkinson's or or Poundland or somewhere. It was only about eight pounds and it's a three bar heater and I've slightly modified the wiring to it just so I can control the heater elements independently. Um, the moulds I make out of MDF and it's very important that you create draft, um, draft breather, um, some gaps for the suction to get to the corners because otherwise you won't be able to get the definition right into the corners. So anywhere where you want a lot of relief drill a hole through um, and this this is like you could call this a manifold because it's allowing all of my little breather holes to uh, get some vacuum from the bed itself. Um, the vacuum table I built out of uh, a wooden there's a wooden box you know with four sides and a top and a bottom um, and the top I just drilled lots of holes in it these are like five mil holes, but it takes a little while to drill all of those holes. Um, so then I've used this, uh, the pump out of the Dyson, and then again I've put some of this seal strip, this, this rubber seal uh, that you get from DIY, DIY shops like B&Q, Wix's, that sort of place, um, just really to improve my um, the vacuum pressure itself. Um, I've ripped the hoot, the switch out of the hoover itself which is here um, which all I've just joined the wires together for the heater and the the pump all to one plug socket which I plug to an uh, um, extension lead just to make it easy to power it all up um, this all just sits on top of this um, old kitchen unit which I just had it lying around so I thought I just wanted a box to put it all in really um, it could be a lot smaller than this because this is all wasted space down here, the bottom eight inches or so. Uh, what else can I really say? Um, I've created a frame for the, um, the actual the plastic frame to sit on, just so it heats in the right, holds it in the right place, and creates a nice seal, just so it uh, heats it thoroughly and we don't lose any heat. Um, Plastic seems to go flexible at about 150 degrees centigrade, which is why the, the laser uh, infrared thermometer is quite handy, but really not essential. Um, you could not use this heater, you could literally build a frame and then put it in your oven. Um, you know, that would actually heat the plastic more evenly. Where this is just handy because I can use it in my garage, out here in my conservatory. Um, so I'd really recommend using these seal strips because it vastly improves your vacuum efficiency. You, know, you don't want to be losing any air from anywhere. You want the, the vacuum on the, on the table, really. Um, I created quite a few things, um, quite a few of these uh, for friends. Um, I've also made this other one, which actually mounted the fan in this unit here in the back um, with some ducting at the side of it, so it makes it a much nicer final product. Um, but I say, you really need to create some draft on your moulds and that, that's what I've learned that if you don't have any draft it's incredibly hard to remove your mould from the, um, the, the finished set sheet afterwards um, so the more draft you can have the better I read somewhere that you should have uh, a minimum of 3 degrees um, but um, I also think if you use some sort of air pressure you could, you could blow the plastic off the mould um, especially if you've screwed the mould down to the bed and then fed pressure um, compressed air, you could then blow the plastic off and that's what they do in commercial vacuum forming. Um, 
this is all a very much improvised setup, but I get some quite high high quality results from it. So the definition's really good, um, and the structure's really good as well. They're, they're strong items, you know. They're not it's not flimsy, and this is two mil plastic I'm using. There's much thicker plastic available up till about six mil, ten mil. The problem is just heating it thoroughly, um, which I'll probably use an oven instead. So it's it's a brilliant thing to make. Um, it's easy, uh, as long as you've got some pretty reasonable joinery skills and some tools just for cutting the timber and putting screws through um, and some basic electronic bodgery skills just so you can butcher the wiring it's all pretty straightforward really it certainly isn't rocket science um, I find that this whole setup probably stands me at about probably about £20 um, but I did manage to find the, the free Dyson pump off a, a friend's broken Dyson Hoover um, and the heater was on um, discount because it was in summer that I bought it. Um, I'm going to build another one more more sophisticated than this one but this one suits my purposes for the time being. Um, I would say that mould making takes a long time. Uh, this mould itself uh, was tweaked and tweaked and tweaked. Um, this bit here is all made out of filler because the shape wasn't quite right and you have to do a lot of sanding, so sanding uh, equipment's essential. Um, this is a, a far better mould in quality than this one because I've managed to get all these gaps in this one where it's warped. Um, but I would say that this one, I don't have enough draft on the on the angles, so um, draft is important. Um, well. Good luck with your vacuum forming. Leave any comments. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Uh, any improvements on my own um, idea and device. Bodgery. Um, and good luck with your, your own attempts at vacuum forming. Um, and don't burn your house down.